Uh, Infernal Squad. I have purchased the audiobook. I'm about halfway through. Uh, Commander has the physical book. I am enjoying it thoroughly. Do I think it's a fucking phenomenal book? No. But I, I do like, and I'm so happy to say, <laughs> the rebels are called terrorists. Yes. They refer to them as terrorists. We win. We won. You know, we get a lot of shit because we're called Rogue Squadron and because uh, Danny back drew that badass picture of us in rebel gear. Mm-hmm. But we kind of hate the rebels sometimes. Yeah. We're, uh, we're infiltrating the rebellion. We're imperial spies. So we, uh, we tend to root for the bad guys because the rebels seem to do no wrong. Mm -hmm. They never get shot. Nothing bad happens to them for the most part. So well, it's, fun, it's fun to see the, the story from the Empire's point of view. Yes, and a Rogue One, we kind of saw a little bit of the dirtiness that the Rebels get into, which was which a, was cool, a, which, which was refreshing. Yeah, for sure. This will show a lot more. Yeah. Um, what this book is based off of is a, a special unit squad called Inferno Squad. Um, there's there's four people involved in it, uh, but they're going after um, Saw Guerrera's defectors. And there's a specific group called the Dreamers, mm -hmm. and they're so dedicated to Saul that they carry on like his legacy oh, okay. beyond his death. I haven't gotten that far. Um, so they're trying to. This sweet. Inferno Squad's trying to infiltrate the Dreamers. Nice. Uh, so they all go undercover, and I, I'm not going to spoil anything beyond that. <clears> but they start talking to these in uh, the, the the Dreamers. There's some badass fucks in these in these dreamers. That's pretty cool. These because these guys aren't like directly even involved with the rebellion, right? Like these guys are. Well, yeah, way... you even saw that in Rogue One. Saul was off in his own world, causing problems for the rebellion. Yes, because he was being an extremist, and now people have the bad view of the rebellion. My mom was like, Lies. "Man, that fucking <laughs> girl." He even said, "Girl." We joked on Rogue One. Since we saw it in theaters, we've said in Saw Guerrero's voice, "Girl." He never says that in the entire fucking Not movie. Once. I don't know where we got that from. <laughs> we just kept saying it over and over again. Um, Inferno Squad, my first impression is it's a cool story. I don't think it's the most well-written thing. Yeah. It, There's some really weird, like, I don't know. Some of the dialogue is kind of, like, hokey. And the way things are, like, phrased and, like, laid out just aren't, like, the best. But the like the subject matter is still good. So it's still worth reading, for it's sure. A, it's a good plot line Yeah, to, to go back. Basically, have a, a special unit that goes undercover yeah. and does shit yeah. is cool. Um, and I'm not even that far into it, so I might be spoiling shit for myself, but you can kind of feel <laughs> a, a part of the in Inferno Squad members starting to get pulled towards like believing in what the Dreamers believe in. Really? Because they start like telling them their, their story, and this is why we're doing it, and mm. blah, blah, blah. And, and then, like, on the side, they're having a good time and dancing and, like, doing normal people stuff. Right. And then, you know, these people are like, well, I was just, like, beat as a child, and now I'm in, an, I'm in an Imperial, so that's all I've known. Right. And then these people are over here, like, having a good time, but also fighting for their lives. Right. So you can kind of feel, like, the struggle. It's cool regardless, like, both ways, just to get some of this more behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, what are the people... We know the cause of the rebellion and of the empire, but like, what are the people inside those forces like actually feeling and thinking? Yeah, and uh, I don't want to spoil too much. Don't spoil well, it. What's her name? E E I. Iden Versio. Iden. Iden was just a quick backstory on the main character. Iden was a Tie Fighter pilot on the first Death Star and was w one of the like the very few survivors of yeah. the first Death Star. So yep. she was That's in the, the trench. That's how the book starts. Uh, she actually like kills. I'm sure we can like sync it up. She probably kills three or four people, like yeah. two Y wings, two X wings, yeah. Um, before the Death Star explodes, and somehow she was like a Vader thing where it right. explodes, but they're like floating away. Well, she she noticed a few uh, Y wings going back towards Yavin, and she was like, "Where are these fuckers trying to go?" And she started chasing them oh, down, yeah, yeah. and then the Death Star blew up and like knocked one of the wings off or something like that, and then she crashed in the moon of Yavin, infiltrated uh, the Rebel base. Anya Avin grabbed a ship and then fled, got out of there. Yeah. Which is pretty badass if you can just imagine one lone Imperial soldier like sneaking in there and getting an X Wing or something. Yeah. So it's she's she's a very talented, awesome character, and she's very hard headed. Uh, and her father's like the leader of the squad. So leader it's of the Beatles. There's kind of some tension there too. So um, it's cool seeing these three character or four characters come together because they all have their unique talents. Yeah. Uh, she's a pilot and a soldier. There's like a a chemist engineering guy and then there's like a 
communications genius girl, and th- there's just they all come together and the perfect uh, mix of things. It yeah. is kind of the perfect squad. The uh, book came, comes with this awesome like poster that you can like pull out and hang up. There is a saying it's on the back. Cool. It says, "The rebellion has hope." The Empire has Inferno Squad. <laughs> Going in fucking people up. Right, and as we've my- seen Lies! from the in- <laughs> as we've seen from the info from uh, the, this is obviously it's titled Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad. It's leading up to the game. And what we've seen from the game is the campaign is going to cover this storyline and it's going to go from what are you shaking your head about? It's going from the second Death Star. I watched that today. I watched uh, a cut scene. It's Aiden on Endor. So not the same storyline as what I meant to say. It's it's covering the Aiden's same. story. Yes. So She's the main she character. She lives quite a long time because she was there for the first Death Star blown up, and then the Battlefront 2 scenes are show her on Endor yeah. during the second one. And then they see up. it, yeah. So and then sh- there's a shot in one of those trailers, too, of her facing Luke. Like you have a close up on Luke and he looks pissed and Iden's in the background. Like, She's gonna die perfectly. Um, or maybe it's an alternate timeline and she kills Luke and then the Empire wins. Well, and it it kind of sucks because it kind of lets me know that everyone's gonna be fine. Well, at least she's gonna be fine out of this. And nothing's gonna happen to her because she's up gonna until live through episode the- six. But then we don't know what's gonna happen in the game. Right. But now we're gonna have some well, between- info on these characters when we play the game, which will be cool. Right. Between this and the game, we know she's gonna be fine for sure. Yeah. So, all right. But uh, uh, it's it's like I said. A, my, my consensus of it right now is it's a great storyline, great characters, not the most well-written thing in the world. Now, I have, like I said, I have the audio book, and it's it's done quite well. Uh, the, st- the, the Star Wars ones usually are. Yeah. Sound effects and... Well, this is the first one I've had a girl narrator, so she does, I mean, she does everything. Which makes just sense, because like, the main character. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, it, it was just kind of weird at first. Getting used to it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause I'm used to guys doing girl voices. Right. Oh, I'm, I, I got to do this. <laughs> the goofiest but, one, like the only audiobooks I've actually listened to, is uh, Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. And I, I don't know if it's the same guy, but it is like kind of like an older like English dude, mm-hmm. and him doing like voices for like Hermione and stuff is so silly in the fucking Harry Potter books. Yeah. But yeah, I know what you mean. Deception. Uh, <laughs> but it's cool. It's a good book. You should, if you don't read the entire thing, you should go to like Star Wars Explained or Stupendous Wave and like get a whole you know, plot summary of the book and stuff before Battlefront comes out. 